Hello! In this video, I'm going to discuss a way to fix Pascal's wager. I want to explain the wager, then some of the problems with it, and then a way of inverting the logic of the argument to avoid those problems. But first, let's talk about how we calculate the value of things. There's going to be some math, but I don't care if you follow the equations. I just want you to get an idea of how we calculate expected value by multiplying probabilities by possible rewards. A guy walks up to you and gives you the following option. He is going to roll a dice. If he gets a 1, he will give you $20. If he rolls a 2 or a 3, then you need to give him $5. If he rolls a 4, you get $10. And if he rolls a 5 or a 6, you get $15. He will roll the dice and play the game if you pay him $5 up front. Is this a good deal? Well, the way that you're supposed to calculate things like this is take every individual outcome, multiply it by the probability that you'll get that outcome, and then add them all together. So we have the probabilities of rolling certain numbers multiplied by the values if you get those numbers all added together to get an expected value of playing of 8 and one third dollars. That's more than $5, so it would be a good deal to pay to play this game with this random guy on the street. Actually, now that I think about it, this is a really sketchy scenario, and I personally wouldn't recommend paying it, even if you did do all this math stuff. Anyways, now that we have a good handle on the idea of how we calculate the expected values of options available to us, we can evaluate Pascal's wager. The first idea is that we rationally should maximize utility. Utility just means stuff which is useful to you, basically happiness or pleasure or whatever. I'm using it as a very broad term to mean stuff you want. Now, the second part of Pascal's wager is setting up a decision matrix where we see the possible options we are faced with. The options we are faced with is that either God exists or he doesn't. You can also either wager on God and worship him and follow him, or you can not do that and live however you want. If God exists, then wagering on God will lead to the infinite utility of going to heaven, and not wagering on God will be equal to the negative infinity utility of going to hell. If there is no God, then wagering on God causes you to miss out on finite utility because serving God on earth is hard, and if you didn't wager on God, you get the finite utility of having lived however you want. Now, calculating the expected utility of wagering on God, we get the probability that God exists, times the utility we would receive if God exists, plus the probability that God does not exist, times the utility we would receive if he didn't exist. We can use similar logic to calculate the expected utility of not wagering on God. Now let's look at the terms where infinities appear in our equations. As long as the probability that God exists is some positive non-infinitesimal value, then when we multiply it by infinity, we're still going to get infinity. Saying that the probability that God exists is above zero is actually fairly uncontroversial. Almost always, the only thing with a probability of zero is a logical contradiction. So even if you are convinced that there is absolutely no God, then you could just say that the probability that God exists is something very, very tiny. And something very, very tiny multiplied by infinity is infinity. Similarly, when we add or subtract any finite amount from infinity, we still have infinity. So in the end, all the finite parts of the equation can really just be ignored, and we're left with wagering on God having an infinite expected utility, and not wagering on God having a negative infinite expected utility. Thus, to maximize utility, we ought to wager on God. Now, I'll be the first to admit that this argument has a ton of problems. The most devastating is the many gods objection. There isn't only one possible view of God to wager on. There's the Christian God, the Muslim God, the Jewish God, and so on. The next objection against Pascal's wager is that the math with the infinity sometimes breaks down. More on that later. The next argument is that if you accept the logic of Pascal's wager, then you don't care about evidence at all, which sounds very dishonest. Lastly, it is argued that you can't actually wager on a particular god. You see, being a Christian, for example, requires that you believe that Christianity is true. But it's argued that we cannot simply pick and choose our beliefs. Can you decide, even for a minute, to believe that 2 plus 2 equals 5? So even if someone wanted to, they couldn't wager on the Christian god. Let's look at those first two objections against Pascal's wager more in depth. Let's expand this chart to include the Christian and Islamic views of God. Now, we have three options on how to wager. Let's fill out this matrix. If we do all the math, the finite parts of the equation get obliterated by the infinities as per usual, and we'll find that the expected utilities of Christianity and Islam are infinity minus infinity. Now, due to some mathematical reasoning I'm not going to get into, it's impossible to evaluate infinity minus infinity. So we can't make a meaningful statement about the expected utilities of Christianity or Islam. Now, what a theist might want to do at this point is say, fine, Pascal's wager doesn't tell you which god you should wager on, but it tells you at the very least you should wager on some god. The expected utility of atheism is negative infinity for crying out loud. 
But there's a problem. We can imagine a god who will send all atheists who refrain from wagering on god to heaven, and this god will also send all theists to hell, for whatever reason. The probability that there is such a god is ridiculously tiny, but I see no reason to assign it a probability of zero. There's no contradiction in it or anything. If we factor this into our equations, then refraining from wagering on a god becomes just as valuable as wagering on no god. On top of that, we still have the problem that the math for calculating infinity minus infinity breaks down. Now, a skeptic might say at this point, Come on, you theists, your silly little wager is broken. Just admit it and move on. But I can't. It really seems like it's not the fault of Pascal's wager that we're running into all these problems. Let me demonstrate why I believe this with another wager. I have two buttons. I must press one. If I press button A, then it has a 99% chance of sending me to heaven and a 1% chance of sending me to hell. If I press button B, then it has a 1% chance of sending me to heaven and a 99% chance of sending me to hell. What's the expected utilities of pressing buttons A or B? Well, if we work out the math, then the infinities obliterate the finite probabilities and the expected utility of pressing each button is infinity minus infinity. But does that mean that pressing button A is just as good as pressing button B? No, that's ridiculous. We can all agree that button A is objectively better than button B for maximizing utility. But the equation we've been using hasn't reported that to us. So we should come up with some framework of analyzing our options so that we could actually be able to deduce that button A is better than button B. And once we have that framework, maybe we can use this to patch Pascal's wager. So I thought about this a lot, and I finally realized what the problem is. You see, what we've been doing is taking the available options and calculating what the utility would be of those options. So we go from available options to the utility it would give us. But we could also invert the whole scenario. We could say, look, I have such and such possible utilities. Possibly I'll get infinite utility, and possibly I'll get negative infinite utility. What's the probability that these utilities would be achieved with a given option? So we go from utility we could get to the available options. Under this analysis, we can make the comparison that all the desirable utilities are more likely with option A and less likely with option B, and all the undesirable negative utilities are more likely with option B and less likely with option A. Therefore, we should go with option A. This way of thinking about analyzing our options to maximize utility works great for this scenario. However, it would be less helpful in most day-to-day -day decisions because usually there's a lot of possible utilities that could be the outcome of an action. Like if I have multiple investment opportunities, it'd be weird to talk about the probabilities that each would give me of $1,000 and separately evaluate the probabilities that each would give me $1,001 and then evaluate the probabilities that each would give me $1,002 and so on. It just gets messy. But as soon as there's a chance at infinite utility on the table, it obliterates the finite and we could zero in on it. Now we have a framework to deal with the expected utilities of each worldview. To sum up, I'm going to explain how inverting the wager changes the argument. In the normal Pascal's wager, I'm walking up to different worldviews and saying, how much utility can I expect from you? Every worldview promises me infinite utility because there is some probability that there is a god who will reward just those people with that worldview. That makes all options completely indistinguishable. So we're going to invert the wager and get the rejaw slack slap, which is Pascal's wager spelled backwards, and it's an amazing name, stop judging it. Here, I ask what the probability is that each worldview will be able to get me infinite utility. Now, because there is a chance of an atheist-loving god, the probability it spits out isn't zero, but it isn't very high either. Now, since we're rationally obligated to maximize utility, then we just find out which worldview has the highest probability of actually getting us infinite utility, and go with that one. The Rejust Slack Sap actually deals with the third objection automatically, then. Evidence is not irrelevant. Atheism, even if true, would not give us much of a promise at infinite utility, so it could basically be ignored. But Christianity or Islam, for example, if true, would be able to deliver infinite utility. So we need some way of testing whether Islam or Christianity is true. We still need evidence. Now, you might have a worry that there's still some built-in dishonesty, but sit tight, we're going to make a big change to the argument soon. Okay, we've handled every objection except the last one. To deal with it, I think we should change the scope of the argument entirely. Let's shift from focusing on wagering on a worldview to choosing any and all action whatsoever. We're going to completely redefine the context of what we're wagering on. Let me explain. At any point in our lives, we're confronted with multiple actions we could do. You could eat some ice cream, you could go for a run, you could read a book, you could feed some birds, you could check out a church, you could debate some people on the internet, and so on. 
Let's call these actions a1, a2, a3, and so on. Now, let's define the function u of a as a probability that doing a will lead to infinite utility for you at some point. Now, whenever you are faced with any decision ever, you should rationally try to maximize utility by comparing the probability that all the actions available to you will give infinite utility, and you should go with the action that has the highest probability of giving infinite utility. Only if every action has a probability of zero of giving infinite utility can you move on safely to considering finite utility. So, even if you know eating ice cream will give you a lot of finite utility, and even though it's possible that there is a god who will reward all ice cream eaters with infinite utility, you should just ignore all that and go with the option which most likely will lead to infinite utility. As long as you believe that there is one action, a k, which has a non-zero chance of giving infinite utility, then ignore all finite utility. Do whatever maximizes your chance of infinite utility, and do this always, constantly, in every decision, going straight for the infinite without looking to the left or to the right at the finite. The promises of finite utility are all obliterated with a mere chance at infinite utility. Therefore, you should always make every decision with the infinite in mind. If you are living for your career, or for relationships, or for happiness here on Earth, or anything else of finite utility, then you are living in utter irrationality. Unless you become 100% sure that infinite happiness is impossible, never stop searching for it. And since you need Jesus Christ for infinite happiness, the Rejoss Slacks app is a pretty good argument for Christianity. That's the end of this video. I think that we've patched most of the problems with the original argument, and have widened the scope of how it interacts with our decision making. Let me know your thoughts on it. Thanks for watching, please subscribe if you enjoy this content.